Hi, this is Keith with How to Build Your Own Home, and I want to talk about two areas in a remodel that are really, really hard to pin down numbers on, and it happens to do with plumbing and electrical, specifically electrical. When you do a remodel like this that we're doing here, the electrical is completely being changed, moved, mostly gutted. I'm going to go through some of the things I go through when it comes to electrical and how I came to a budget line item for this job. Because like I said before, it's very hard to nail that down. A lot of changes, a lot of alterations, a lot of, oh, got to pull that out to make it work better over here. Those types of things that you really can't see in it um, at the start of the build. You see it as you unfold, and you'll see why in just a minute. To my right, there's a real big mess, and we're going to end with that. And I'm going to show you the mess that we have and how we're dealing with that mess. We'll start over here. Now that we've got a nice open space here, we've got the beam in place. We've got here, this used to be a kind of a dining room. We're converting it to uh, an anterior room uh, with a continuation of dining over here. But this will be probably some forward living space. But I walked through the entire place. And because the lighting is changing drastically, we just wrote four cans and OK, meaning the light that's here is OK. Not the fixture, but the location of it all new lighting and throughout this entire home. But we put four cans in here. Now my electrician knows proportional, meaning to place them in the most proportional, most best fitted space for lighting for this home. We're gonna maintain the same can light fixtures that we've got here. And typically I would just mark it on the floor here, but I have a lot of experience with my electrician. He knows best where to put them and he's never gone wrong on that. But if you're not really experienced and you really don't know your electrician, go ahead and mark them on the floor, uh, the best location for those lights. I'll show you how I did that in this next room. Okay, we're just in a new bedroom here. This is going to be kind of a uh, mother-in-law's suite. So we're leaving the light here, but I put an X on the floor here to pull that light. And then I have additional circles on the ground to add three additional can lights. So if there's not an X on the ground, uh, then that light stays. If there is an X on the ground, it's coming out. And of course, this here is a fan light combo. And I indicate, yes, we're going to have four can lights in here. So now my electrician knows that's what's going to be. Um, actually, I need to change that because it's going to be a six cans because we came in at a second time. See the, the newer paint there? It actually, we added some cans. We came through here twice. So I got to come back and get some spray paint and put six cans on there. But what I want to show you is over here, we're going to have some built-ins with specific lighting inside the built-in. So my cabinet and uh, subcontractor came and actually put in the design features of what's going to be put in on both sides of this fireplace. And we also put TV here where we want outlets, and they're all written on the plans. And we walk through the electrician on all that, so they're all ready to go. Let me show you a couple of other places where we did that. We're, we are at another place here. This is an entertainment, entertainment section. And uh, we indicated where we want outlets, TV, low voltage, additional can lights. Again, they're all written up here and we have our dimensions accurately written on here as well. So again, even if you have a house that's designed and you have your architectural plans ready to go, a lot of the times your electrician will go off of your cabinet drawings specifically in those areas where you have built-ins and cabinets and counters and, and uppers and lowers the whole nine yards. And they need those plans and you can write on them specifically where you want your outlets and where you want everything. Again, the master architectural plans will have basically your general electrical plan, but it may not drill down to this level here. So you put it on the wall, they know exactly where to go and you walk them through the whole thing and they have a good roadmap of where to go. Let's go one more upstairs and I'll show you a nightmare. Okay, we're upstairs in a master bathroom. And again, we have the same thing here. We've got all our cabinetry, counters, uppers, built-ins, etc., showing where we want power, where we want outlets, lighting, vanity lights, upper can lights. Now, something to keep in mind when it comes to a vanity light, this is an, an old vanity light right here, but we're going to have a, a, a vanity light up here. You may not know exactly where to put that. So what the electrician will do is they'll take some low, some wire from 14-2 wire and they'll coil it up inside a bay and that's really close to where it's going to be. And all they have to do is drill a hole, reach in there and grab it and they can wire up the feature. 
So you don't necessarily need to know exactly where that J box is going to go, but you, you can put that wiring. Sometimes I've seen that wiring six feet long inside the bay, and then you can really decide later where you want to put it. You just want it as close as you possibly can to where you think it's going to go. And then you can kind of decide that later. As far as plugs are concerned, if this was a mirror plug, that's another story. And they come in and measure the mirror exactly where to cut in those, those plugs for that. There's codes, requirements for GFI. This here is an old GFI, which is a ground fault protection or ground fault interrupter is really what they call it. And that there has to be within a certain distance of a, of a, a basin or a sink. And so there's all kinds of codes with regard to that. He'll follow those, but this here is the roadmap for him. And then we have the larger um, bathroom and we have indications on the floor where we're gonna put additional lights, where we're gonna put the, the, um, the fan. And we'll actually bring that out here uh, and put a fan in, inside the whole bathroom. That's where they want it. Now there are some codes again in different jurisdictions where they want it inside the, bat the toilet room or they put it in outside here. I go by what my client wants. This here is kind of more grandfathered in. The only permitted part of this house really is the downstairs area. Although the inspector will come up here, he shouldn't have an issue with where we put that fan. And one other thing we're doing here is you'll see it later on. We're actually going to pull this uh, water heater. This is kind of a nice idea to have a water heater so close to your master bathroom because the main water heater for the house is probably 65 feet that way and in the garage and another level down. So you would take a very long time to get hot water up here. So we're going to pull this out, put a tankless, uh, a gas tankless water heater inside here. It'll take up much less space, but you're going to have instant water here and we're going to actually have a shower and a soaker tub. So it's going to be great. Plus a stackable washer and dryer right over in this way. So having a, a, another water, when you have a home this size, it's nice to just get your water heater as close to where you're going to live the most and want the most comfort. And this actually will supply for most likely um, this room and the bathroom downstairs. And the other water heater will take care of the two bathrooms that way plus the kitchen. So they're separate. We don't have to have a recirculation over a long distance. If you know what recirc is, it's just basically a loop. So the, 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 the hot water hits the place you wanted to hit first because that's where your most use is going to be. And then it loops around and hits other places and it comes back to the heating source and keeps circulating. It's called recirc. And you want to hit the place that you want water first. And you can talk to your plumbers about that. This here is going to hit this main bathroom first. So it's going to be a great thing. Let's go back downstairs and show you a little nightmare I'm dealing with. Okay, this is a, a nightmare I've mentioned a couple of times in, in the video today. We had a wall originally that went out to about here, and the original stairs actually came down this way, a double stairway, and we've eliminated that. So now I've got all these cables coming right down where they were. My framer was really, really good at taking these out gingerly and removing them from the sud work, which is not easy, but he did that. So now I've got all this basically low, low voltage cable. Um, basically your cable and we don't have any cat five so we're going to reroute the entire house with some cat five this is some old system here and there's also a lot of speaker wire in here there's a lot of speakers so <clears throat> i we speak with them and talk with them the best route and we've got wires coming that way <laughs> and we've got wires coming this way so we need to stay within the location but i've got a closet right above and so we think that's probably going to be the best route. But when you talk with your electricians, you want to give options. You don't want to say, uh, let's make it, have it, make it happen here. And you force fit the whole situation into that and may not necessarily work. Now, I know my electrician, he doesn't do monkey stuff. But we're probably going to take it all up there and put it in a closet. Now, keep in mind, I don't have access. There's some supporting structures you can't drill through. In some jurisdictions, they may allow for it. Others, they don't. And some of them, it's very strict on where you can drill a hole through a supporting structure. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay, right above me is a supporting structure. This is a um, four-ply LVL beam. A lot of jurisdictions do not let you drill through that for electrical, plumbing, or anything because it loses the integrity of the whole strength. 
Sometimes they do, and if they do, that means that they want that hole to be dead center inside the beam structure. So we're gonna do probably maybe, maybe three, maybe four half inch drill holes so we can fit some 14-2 and some 12-2 wire through, and that has to be dead center in the beam. It's so beefed up, plus I over did some overkill on this wall over here, plus I made it two by six, and I made it a shear wall, so I made some additional strength over there. So hopefully we shouldn't have a problem, but that can be an issue. So when you're thinking about lining stuff out, thinking about, oh, I can't go through supporting structure. A lot of people don't think like that. And I've seen some real nightmares. So as my electrician over there, he's laughing at me. We've seen some really ugly things where people just drilled some nasty holes through things and they shouldn't do that. Then you watch out for that. But if you're ever worried about when you're remodeling something, just bring your electrician over and walk through the whole place and he will make sure that you're in alignment with what can be done and what can't be done. We'll give you an after picture of all this when we're done. Just a real keen uh, alert to when it comes to plumbing, especially electrical on big remodels, you really can't narrow that down. And so I indicated uh, earlier in this post that I mentioned that, that I gave a very high allowance on my budget. I gave an allowance of $30,000 on this house for all my electrical. Now, I don't think I'll hit that, but I have enough room so that I know that I'm not going to come across that threshold. I may have to go to Congress and get uh, a debt ceiling allowance <laughs> to raise the debt ceiling, but I don't think I'll need to do that. I was very comfortable with that allowance. And that's how I budget stuff like this. It's such a headache. You really can't narrow it down. I make sure I have a heavy, comfortable allowance, and especially with remodels. With the new construction, it's pretty much mapped out, but with, with the remodels like this, I'm pulling stuff out, I'm replacing old. I don't know if I can use all the old. It could have been nicked, there could have been shorts in it. There's so much work involved. Allow for a comfortable allowance, especially when it comes to electrical. That's from a lot of experience I've had. Plus I was an electrician for a year and a half. So I've seen a lot of those nightmares. We'll give you some after pictures on this. We're still doing this remodel. It's been a lot of fun. You've watched this so far. This is Keith Couch with How to Build Your Own Home.